No, you were a special um, guest. The reason I come now this weekend is at the invitation of Aisha Carlo, of course, the Carlo Arts Festival, but more specifically to honour the 25th anniversary of the Carlo College of Music, which was set up by Magella Swan and I know has been kept going magnificently and increasingly successfully by her and her team. Um, and I'm aware that uh, you know a significant minority of the teachers are actually already past pupils of the school. Now, as somebody who has spent his life in music education, in my case in higher education, but the principles are the same. And uh, you can you get a sense after a while, you know, for all kinds of reasons, uh, as to how sustainable a model is. It's it's much easier to start things than it is to keep them going. Mm. And also keeping them going, they must be kept going, not by dint of uh, just the efforts of a single individual. I think the person with the vision has also got to spread some of the fertility of that imagination around to the team around her, uh, mm. so that everybody begins to take ownership of the idea. The idea then becomes bigger than the person who started it. And that ultimately is actually the key. Uh, I, f I, f I would find it very hard to believe that Carlo College of Music wouldn't be here in 250 years time. Well, we, we hope so, but yeah. I think sometimes the part of the thing is that it's even more remarkable that she's had very little, very little funding, say through, through education systems yeah. and everything, to, to keep that, that, that part of music education no, going. This is, this is an example of, of, of educational entrepreneurship. This is an example of uh, in a way, marketplace uh, e educational principles, and uh, it means that you have to go it yourself. Mm. You know, you're not part of the national public school system or something. There are both advantages and disadvantages to it. The disadvantages, of course, are that you aren't linked into some uh, fund which is linked ultimately back to taxpayers' mm. money. Mm. The advantages are that you have uh, a flexibility of purpose and of style you can make decisions without going through the necessary structures that come with committees and things like that, that of necessity have to be there to protect the public fund. Yeah. Uh, but when you're absolutely operating on your own, uh, you can move much faster. Uh, you're much lighter on your feet. So there are advantages and disadvantages. And who's to say in the future uh, what kind of interaction there might be between the public and the private? Uh, in a venture like this, it's still much too early indeed, you know, 25 years is a long time, but it's a lot less than 100. Now you just weren't here just to talk about Magella, you actually played yesterday, Yeah, didn't last you? night was yeah. great, uh, in, at the George Bernard Shaw Theatre, of course, in the, the bowels of visual, uh, and what a, what a fabulous building, and what a fabulous um, auditorium, and I played with the orchestra, and what you sense about the, the young people in that orchestra uh, is the professionalism. Uh, firstly, the thing that hits you is the professionalism of the surround, even the people putting out the seats and the team that's actually the backstage team that's there. Uh, the music stands, uh, the instruments themselves, the big bass drum, the timpani, the glockenspiel, all of the stuff, the brass, the woodwind, and of course the string choir as well. I was playing actually with the strings, a piece of my own called Woodbrook. It was super and, uh, those, the, you know, the, the tuning, the intonation, uh, the sense of style, a sense of musicianship uh, that they brought to it. It's a simple piece, uh, but nonetheless, uh, simple and all as it is, uh, uh, it demands uh, an ability. <coughs> it's a very an emotional it. piece, isn't it? It is, yeah, I think, yeah. yeah it's extremely it is. emotional piece. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <coughs> it's kind of minimalist, I think, as well. You know, the way that it kind of swirls and mm. turns and changes. It's very simple. But perhaps its simplicity is what draws people to it, you know. Uh, but the important thing for me last night was, and I do get a particular buzz out of playing with young people, um, because they bring, uh, they bring a freshness to it. And this is definitely a band, this is definitely an orchestra that has already uh, gone over the boundary from the amateur into the fresh, pre-professional sound. And I know that many of these, um, graduates of the college have gone on to do all kinds of things and gone on to do further study in Dublin and some of them have come down to us in Limerick at the University of Limerick I know and I know there's a mixture of uh, uh, traditional performers in there in the middle of the classical matrix as well which is a very Irish thing you know mm -hmm. um, 
that somebody came up to me yesterday who was a classical fiddler, but she also played concertina. And uh, it's that kind of, uh, what in language we'd call it bilingualism. You know, sometimes in music you call it bimusicality. And it's that bimusicality and multi-musicality that can be a strong uh, Irish marker, mm. actually, that, would, that you wouldn't find as commonly, let's say, in the UK uh, or in France, Germany or Italy. Um, and because of the strength of oral tradition music and traditional music here, there's a particular kind of uh, intersection of the two, which, as time goes on, becomes easier and more natural to us and uh, part of our own confidence and ability to own the music that we play. Yeah, I think uh, you, 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 uh, tonight about the set, set members of the, of the orchestra, some of them had been past members who came back because of the anniversary. Yes. We got, they were the more, much more mature members, but we also had junior orchestra members in there, and they were, I don't think you actually were there for that type of thing, but they were equally tentative to yeah. what was going on in the thing, and I think it's a, a testament to the orchestra itself. Is you any little message for those, or the, the junior orchestral players for, for them? Well, you know, I think they already know uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, and what they know, I think, uh, they may not be able to articulate it, but they know it in their gut, in a sense, uh, in their intuition, that they're part of something that is organic. They're part of something that has its own synergy. Uh, they're part of something that has a particular uh, propulsion of energy and the energy of sustainability about it. There's a sense of morale boost uh, there's a sense of celebration, there's a sense of joy that they bring to their activities and there's a sense of pride uh, whether it's with the 12 year olds or the 16 year olds or as you say maybe the 18 and 19 year olds who come back uh, to help out uh, it proves that there is what I would describe as a community of sound or a sound community uh, emerging uh, from this particular vision from this particular hot spot and it is a kind of cultural hotspot, I think, the college. Uh, and uh, it's going to n enrich, obviously, the lives of all the kids who go through it. And it's going to continue to enrich the lives of the teachers who give so generously and get them back from that generosity that happens in education. But it's also going to benefit uh, a wider matrix of Irish society as these young people grow up and out, and in certain cases, spend the rest of their lives making music, teaching music, investigating music, making up new music. Going back to UCC when you first met Magella, uh, she was a student, you were a lecturer. Um, do you remember her much? I remember Magella extremely well because she's changed so little actually over the years. So I hadn't seen her for a long time. And uh, as soon as I saw her yesterday, uh, I, I went back 20 years straight away, you know. And uh, I've been very fortunate over the years to have remained in contact with and to have had my own students remain in contact with me and funnily enough even in the past year as I get older they kind of they more in fact pop out of the woodwork and um, I was known in UCC of course for championing the traditional music side of the coin but it's a matter of great satisfaction to me that uh, many of the purely classical musicians who were who were students in Cork at the time are also the ones who are keeping in touch with me uh, because, of course, as, as people might know, um, I, I straddle both traditions, in a way. So I like to see that, and it's uh, particularly important to me to be a uh, participant in, in, so, in something like this. Michal, um, it was a pleasure listening to you last night, playing, and particularly, I won't keep you too long now, but they, they, you did a workshop as well. That's right, yes. They, there were so many younger musicians at that, that yeah. one or two of them said, well, I, I don't really know this guy, but yeah. they came out yeah. loving you. Yeah. Yeah. What you did was amazing. Well, it's uh, something I could sense that, you know, there were about 30 people there, and uh, the level of engagement, um, you could, I could pick it up from their, their bodies, their eyes, their faces, the level of engagement with what I was talking about was, uh, was very encouraging. And indeed, the questions and several of them came up to me afterwards and engaged with me with all kinds of uh, intelligent uh, questions and there was a sort of quietness in the room which was not uh, shyness it was a, a, in a way the quietness of curiosity and the quietness of intelligence and of searching 
and uh, when you actually get that collective of minds in the room at the one time, uh, you know you've arrived in a space uh, which is ripe uh, for those particular kinds of workshops. So, and I think it's a great idea, you know, if you're inviting somebody, myself or anybody else, in like that, is actually to include some of those kinds of talks or workshops in and around the performance. It's a great opportunity, I think, for everybody to get one, to know one another and to get in under the skin of the music itself. Mihal Asulawan, Garmila Mahabha. Falchadot, Stefan.